Some of you guys ignore transitions, which is a bad thing. They can really level up your music if used correctly. By the end of this video, you will be a transition king. My king. We're gonna start with something easy. So, level one, structural transitions. Here you can see the same melody in my intro and the chorus. Now, I don't want them to sound the same. So to make the transition pop, we're gonna make them sound a little different in the chorus. To do that, open up the menu on the top left and choose make unique. That way, all the changes we do to this one will not be applied to the other clips. Then double click it to open up the sampler. Now on top, turn the pitch all the way up until it's one octave higher than the original. That will surprise the listener the moment the chorus hits. That sounds awesome. Now we can enhance this effect even more by stepping up to level two using effects. First, make sure the melody is linked to a mixer track. To do that, double click it and use your scroll wheel to send it to a track. Then on top, open up the mixer panel. Select the mixer you sent your melody to and go to the effect rack. Here you find the fruity love filter effect. Once it's open, you'll find the cutoff knob right here. The more you turn it to the left, the more frequencies will be cut off. Now what if we could automate this? To do that, right click it and choose create automation clip. Then go back to the playlist. Now this line represents the cutoff button. For example, I want the frequencies of my melody to slowly cut off. To do that, create a line like this. You can even curve it a little bit if you'd like. This is what it sounds like. Awesome, now it's time for level three, sound effects. And this one is my personal favorite. First, try and find some harsh sound effect like a door smash or a gunshot. Then simply drag it in the playlist. Now you can drag it underneath the start of the chorus, which can sound really cool. But I think I know something better. Double click it to open up the sampler, then hit a reverse toggle. This will, of course, reverse your sound. Next, drag it right in front of your chorus, and there you go. That sounds awesome. You have just reached level four, which you're gonna love. With this one, we're gonna use some silence. Let's try cutting off the melody so that the gunshot becomes more prominent. To transition between a chorus and verse or basically anything, you can just cut off all the sounds. sounds awesome. Now, I also like to do this mid-chorus. Simply select all your sounds and drag them to the left. However, leave the snare alone. That way the snare will sound extremely present, followed by a complete silence. And wow, you guys have just reached level five, the reverse reverb effects. Again, let us use intro to chorus transition. Now we're gonna put a heavy reverb right on this melody. Make sure the dry is all the way down and the wet is all the way up. Now close the reverb and open up Edison. Once it's open, go to the tools and click the record button. Of course, make sure to solo the track the melody is on. Now let the melody play for a very short moment so that the reverb will register in Edison. Now trim the sample a little bit and drag it into the playlist. Next, you wanna double click it to open up the sampler again. Here you can choose to reverse it. And now all you need to do is drag it against the beginning of your chorus and there you go. That is amazing. So transitions like these can really eat up all the energy of your CPU. So don't forget to optimize FL. And to do that, click the video right here on my left. Goodbye.